Hey everybody, it's Party Elite, and today we're kicking off a brand new Let's Play with Total War Three Kingdoms. I am extremely excited for this Let's Play because we're going to be taking an approach to Total War that I don't really believe has been truly possible until now. It's what I've been most excited for ever since Three Kingdoms was starting to get fleshed out. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm really pumped in actually trying to execute it and seeing how far we can push the envelope. First things first though, a quick thanks does go out to Creative Assembly for giving me an early access review key, not only so that I could just play the game on the channel and showcase it, but also so that I could get a review prepared. If you haven't seen my review yet, I'll link to it under the I at the top right corner of the screen. I encapsulate all of my thoughts there so you know exactly how I feel about the game, but that'll obviously be conveyed through the uh, Let's Play as well. We're not going to waste too much of time with uh, an introduction. Uh, we're going to dive right in with a new campaign as Kong Rong, Master Scholar. Remain flexible to react with agency. The bureaucracy of China can only succeed through the support of education. This is what Kong Rong earnestly believes. Uh, Kong Rong is focused on wisdom and learning that it might better the people and the economy. In Qing province, uh, Again, I will be butchering pronunciations. I've been trying to learn pinyin and stuff, but it's not that easy, so I apologize in advance. So in Qing province, he is establishing schools to rehabilitate the population in the wake of the devastating Yellow Turban rebellions. Now, as chaos consumes China once more, Kong Rong knows that only through knowledge and insight will prosperity prevail once more. So we are a master scholar, a strategist is the type of general we are, and our faction specializ specialization sorry, uh, is trade monopoly. So we can actually uh, create this trade monopoly, which helps us have more trade influence, which in turn helps us make more money through trade agreements. And our population increasing uh, in turn increases our trade influence as well. So we're very trade centric. We can make a lot of money that way. And again, our place focus focuses trade and population. So we are going to try and take a tall approach. That doesn't mean there's not going to be any fighting, folks. There's going to be a lot of warring, but we are also going to try and vassalize people and use them like chess pieces, basically. It's a lot of fun. I did it with my Yuan Xiao uh, playthrough, uh, and it's it, it's very different, and that's what I want to try and push and explore, because uh, I think it's not like anything we've been able to do with Total War before. We've got our uh, Academies of Culture Learning Building Chain, we've got the Education Program Learning Assignment uh, to buff income from commerce, and we've got our Loyalty to the Han, which changes our path to victory, and I'll explain that as we dive in. And finally, uh, Wang Xu is our righteous hero, a commander general type who will be joining us right at the start of our campaign. Uh, we've got an interesting situation, an interesting start, uh, but let's dive on in in records mode because I prefer how the battles feel in records mode. If you'd like to see a romance uh, playthrough as well, let me know in the comments down below and I will happily fulfill that. But with records mode, generals are actually in bodyguard units. We've got tactics mattering some more and fatigue and all matters a lot more as well. So records mode it is playing very hard, very hard of course. Enough of an introduction. China must be united. Embers rise, stark against the night. The tyrant Dong Zhuo wields the flames of destruction. Luo Yang burns. Chaos ignites as the power of the Unix is crushed. In the pyre, the Han falters. A generation's potential shatters. Knowledge dies. Kong Rong feels drawn to action. He knows he must act. Wisdom will save China. But war must first restore it. Luo Yang is set ablaze by Dong Zhuo, my lord. His iron grip is unshaken. He heads west with the Emperor. Yes, Lord. The yellow turbans persist. Their greatest strength is in your lands. Alright, so really quickly, apologies if you were thrown off by the 
Mandarin English, Mandarin English back and forth. It's just that I have my generals and units set to uh, Mandarin language because I feel that's more immersive. But my advisor, of course, is in English so that I can understand her a lot more easily without having to read. So I hope you uh, hope you guys didn't mind that. Uh, but establish your power. Lord Kong Rong, chaos surrounds you. The Yellow Turban Rebellion spreads like wildfire through your lands. You must snuff them out. You must then act to bring an end to Dong Zhuo's greed. The Han falters as his grand treason tears the land apart. Liu Bei, an honorable man, could be a firm ally as you build power against the tyrant. The time is now, my lord. China has great need of your wisdom. So defend against the Yellow Turbans and be wary of Yuan Shao. I'm going to be very, very wary of Yuan Shao because the game does not mess around when it gives you these warnings. So, um... First mission is to take out this army. It's the typical Total War beginning. War comes for Kong Rong, who reluctantly fights. Despite all our efforts, the Han is collapsing, and in its wake you are beset by a resurgence of the Yellow Turban menace. If you are to restore peace and foster the knowledge for which you are known, these insurgents must be put down by force. Not going to read every you know notification that comes up, but I just wanted to highlight the writing. I didn't get to talk about it in my review, but it is beautiful writing. Very poetic and waxing and waning. I love it. Big fan. Uh, Alright, so, quick overview. Now, I haven't played a Kong Rong playthrough yet. Uh, I left that for my Let's Play because I kind of want to experience my first time playing this uh, with you guys. Um, I think it's more fun that way. So it should be pretty interesting to see how things uh, play out. I'm pretty sure our first step is going to be to destroy this army and then take this town. It's always, your again, your, your typical... Uh, Total War start. We are surrounded by enemies, though. We've got the Yellow Turban Rebellion up there. We've got Huang Shao, who is actually one of the Yellow Turban uh, Rebellion DLC factions over here. This is also Yellow Turban Rebellion. Yeah, so should be a good time. Should be a good time. Again, just because we're going to be playing tall does not mean we're not going to have battles to fight. This first one is probably one that I'm going to auto-resolve, actually, because... Uh, yeah, no, no, no. We'll, we'll, we'll fight the next one, which is almost guaranteed to be a battle for a town. To delegate that, auto resolve it. I should mention as well that even though I am playing the game in records mode, I have the color set up uh, to be in romance mode. So the, the post effects you're seeing, the vibrance and all of that, is because we're playing with romance visual settings as opposed and, and records gameplay settings. Um, Wang Grao, you are a rebel, so we will execute you. There is no mercy. You cannot spread your teachings uh, and, and dull the blade of China. Ransom you, get some money out of here. And hopefully uh, we can recruit some more units and stuff soon. War comes for yeah, okay, great, we completed that. New mission issue, you capture and occupy the following settlement. Knew it, and it is in fact the livestock farm here. Fair enough. It's it's to ease you in. The rebel army is defeated, my lord, but their stronghold yet remains. The county and commandery must know peace. To that end, you must march on the yellow turban hideout and liberate it from their insurgent grip. All right. As they um, fight side by side. Yes, your, your general's, general's bond. bonds will deepen. I'm assuming. There we go. Yeah, I love this little icon as well. It's like side glances. So Kong Rong and Wang Xu have become friends because of battle fought side by side. Let's quickly, we'll, we'll quickly take a look at things as they come up. So uh, if we look at Kong Rong here, look at his relations. Uh, Wang Xu is a friend. Um, Sun Xiao is also a friend. These guys are just acquaintances. Oh, we know Liu Bei. Okay, cool. Uh, so. Wang Xu being a friend is because of our battle together and the fact that we are a part of a faction. Uh, if we take a look at the check mark, we can see that we both oppose cruelty because I'm kind and Wang Xu, or Hong Rong is kind and Wang Xu is the righteous hero and kind is a trait. So traits, uh, new traits get added and stuff as well. Uh, all that stuff comes together to determine your relationship. So, for example, Huang Xiao. Uh, our diplomacy doesn't go too well, but uh, we do both respect patience and admire intelligence, so there's some room there, there's some wiggle room there to work together. Uh, whereas with Dong Zhuo, we have no agreements, basically. I mean, like some agreements, but you know, overall, it doesn't really work out. So, uh, really cool in that sense, and again, when you actually do things uh, together, you end up getting to uh, make making friends and stuff. Uh, and rivals and stuff as well. It's really neat. And uh, again, I talk about it all in my review too. I, I'm getting distracted. I'm sorry. Uh, ancillaries gained as well. Quite a few ancillaries gained. So let's go ahead and assign some of that. Uh, with Kong Rong, we'd like to up his cunning because higher cunning means more ammunition uh, in the retinue. So you know, that's not a bad idea. So let's see if there's anything that can do that for us. Um, not there. And not here either. I mean, resolve buff is okay. I'm not really going to be sending Kong Rong into combat. I love his smile. Dude's so happy. Um, you are a champion, so you're good against enemy generals. You might want a higher resolve, actually. So let's go ahead and get you 
our uh, wooden dog here. And in terms of followers, I'm going to give you the labor recruiter for the extra resolve as well. So again, a little, a little bit of help there. And what we're going to do for Wang Xiu, who's a commander, which is inspiring friendly troops, best group with retinues of melee cavalry, and that's what we've got so far. What I'd like to do for you is get you the instinct buff increases melee damage, sure. I was more thinking about our uh, military instructor because that enables a loose formation own army. Um, it's for the whole army. I could give it to uh, Hong Rong as well, or instead even. Do that. And that should apply to the whole army, unless I have misunderstood that uh, tooltip. In that case, yeah, so you're fine with that. No followers available for you. Sorry, Wang Xu. Uh, we could maybe replace, since I'll be sending my champion into melee more often than not. Do we have any weapons? Uh, we do, but none of these are going to be better. 93624. 24. Uh, we'll leave it as is for now. All right, cool. Go ahead and get rid of all of that. Thank you. And let's move on in to Beihai. And again, we might actually fight this one. We didn't take too much damage in the last one, but it's always nice to have a battle under our belt. Uh, decisive victory, but medium predicted casualties. Maybe we can reduce that. This really shouldn't be too much of a struggle, but that means we can get some nice cinematic shots and stuff going as well, which uh, always fun to do. So to the battlefield, we go to crush the Yellow Turban Rebellion. What could go wrong? The weird thing about editing out the... Um, loading screens for these battles is that they actually, the characters, your generals, and potentially the enemy generals, if there are any, they speak during the loading, so there's some nice banter and stuff. I don't think we'd want to include that or anything, though. Uh, so we are playing on extreme unit sizes. It's been working pretty smoothly for me. I haven't had any trouble there, so we've got really large armies. It's cool to see. Uh, and uh, something really nice is actually if you have a bunch of units selected and you just right-click and drag, by default, they get arranged based on uh, a sensible formation, like archers in the back and things like that. So really nice quality of life changes, especially for these quicker battles. Now, what we're going to do is, I mean, we'll try and rush that hill if possible. Uh, let's get you over here. you got wedge formation available as well, so that'll be nice and helpful. And you're unbreakable, of course. All right, so this will be good. Move these guys together for the most part. Um, maybe snake them through here and come in for side charges or something. But over here, we'll keep uh, Zheng Yan moving up front, because again, you can engage enemy generals, not that there is one. And Kong Rong, as a strategist, will stay behind to stay safe. And again, because we're playing in records mode, I do have to be wary of uh, fatigue and things like that. So we will be marching as opposed to running everywhere. And the AI has deployed all the way over there, which is actually not bad. Good call. Uh, that little hill up there that can protect. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and move all of you um, over to here. Do that. Form up over there so we can uh, keep out of their range. And over here as well, let's get you all over to here, I think. Yeah, and march it. Alright, cool. I like the weather right now as well. It's like twilighty. Well, weather, lighting conditions, twilight. And I do like the depth of field effect. Sometimes it can be a bit much, but like at certain points it's just beautiful. And my god, like... One of my favorite things in Total War games always is watching, especially the historical ones, is watching armies march. Like, they look gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. They march through. Oh, camera shake is kind of wild over here, but like, insane. And, and I do like the vibrant color option right now. So, funnily enough, while I was actually doing my review, I was playing with the, um... The, the, the records color option, which is a lot more muted and desaturated and things like that. I really like that. But uh, recently, because I've played so much of that, I swapped over to this romance mode because it's springtime. You know, the sun's finally up in Toronto. <laughs> Buddy, just trip over. <laughs> um, uh, it's beautiful outside. I want it to be beautiful inside as well. I like these vibrant uh, colors and stuff. So I've been swapping around back and forth a little bit, actually. And as you can see, he tripped up again. That's hilarious. As you can see, though, our characters, even though we're playing in records mode and the generals are not just unique, uh, you know, individual units, individual characters, I should say, uh, they still stand out. They still are characters um, because, again, that's sort of a driving force. That was a part of the driving, uh, part of the design philosophy. Uh, from what we've learned. Anyways, we're not going to watch this go through slowly. Let's go ahead and speed up some time over here. Uh, and the banners, actually, I should point out, are pretty neat as well. Like, keep an eye out for them. Why are our archers stuck back here? Okay. 
Um, <laughs> like I say in my review as well, the battles have some good parts and some bad parts. The fact that we're dealing with pathfinding like that and some goofy AI stuff is a little, you know, weird. Um, but yeah, the banners as well, they actually are physical entities, so they will be dropped as, uh, as they fight or they'll be put down so that one can draw a sword. A really cool touch. It really, again, brings the battlefield to life. I typically play from medium to far zoom out levels, so uh, it, it helps, uh, it helps players, especially like me, I think, uh, have some more life on the battlefield. Right, let's go ahead and get ourselves set up over here. We'll arrive soon enough. There we go. Beautiful little rotation. Ah. Uh, this is what makes historical games shine, is like this kind of movement and stuff, I don't know. God. I'm having, I'm like reminiscing about when I first played Shogun 1 now. Alright, we're in a decent enough position, we'll nudge forward ever so slightly and start firing away at the enemy. Their cavalry... Oh, one of, one piece of cavalry might be hiding over there, okay, fair enough. Go ahead and nudge forward, again, the slightest amount over here. We'll get you up over there and let's get our cavalry nudging forward as well because I want to get into their archers without eating too many shots where is your cavalry okay fair enough so you know what I might actually do that march you over please march you over because I just need to nudge a little bit further up So, I, so, I'm playing in records mode. I'm going to take my time with battles and stuff. I hope you guys don't mind that. Actually, I should let you know, if you are enjoying this uh, Let's Play and you would like to see more, the best thing you can actually do is uh, let me know by dropping a like and a comment down below. It helps me understand what you guys are interested in watching more or less of. And uh, if you have any feedback on how I'm doing this coverage, let me know that in the uh, comments down below as well. Right now, we're just going to fire away some of these peasant spearmen. They will drop like flies under all of this range support. And again, because Kong Rong has high, um, oh, I forget what the blue one's called again, but because that's high, we will have a lot of ammunition as well. And these guys are just going to sit here looking pretty, eating these shots. And uh, again, that is kind of one of my issues with the, uh, the battles is that the AI um, still kind of does this kind of stuff. Um, oh, I hear sounds. Are they routing already? Look at that. Hold your fire. Fire up over here instead. Get these guys off a little bit too. And just little things like that. We're within their range now as well, so they might start firing at us. There we go. They are firing. Let's see if we can't break another unit before we pull back. Or I could even do something like this. Send my troops forward. Oh, turn around. Fire this way. Cavalry's coming through. Time to send ours through as well. I love watching cavalry drop to range fire. Took a risk here, but in comes the interception for the most part. Pull you back. Oh, you know what? That worked well. Send you up there. Bring you over here. Send you up there. I'm gonna charge in there. Let's go. Go. We might see some really nice charges here, actually. Decent charge up there. This is the one I'm looking forward to most. Here we go. Where are they? Oh, there they are, running away. Cowards, die! Fall before my might! Alright, they're kind of really clumped up. Not the best charge, unfortunately. Here we come again. There we go, cutting right through. These guys will not stand a chance. Unfortunately, didn't really get to pull off my wedge formation or anything. Let's pull back and get another charge there. These guys are having a tough time. Those guys are having a tough time. Let's go ahead and fire over here, please. These guys should start dropping. Oof. And my favorite thing has always been to see uh, troop numbers drop as they get hit by range fire. Oh my god. There they go, giving up on the fight. Good stuff. Wreck the cavalry. Get you in here with a nice rear charge. I think we've done well enough for ourselves. Go in, wedge formation. Let's dive on in. Oh, these guys take too much of a beating there momentarily. Pull you back here, please. Spears are dangerous <laughs> for horses. <laughs> Alright, this should be good. Any warriors are running. Charge you down over here. Uh, we could fire... Oh. Fire here. Be able to wreck this cavalry unit pretty easily. There we go. They're giving up on the fight. Well, that's that. That is that. 
couple good shots, and you saw some of the issues I have with battles as well. Many people were very confused at my cons my issues with battles in my review, which is fair. Maybe I didn't express it clearly enough, but hopefully as we play some, you'll see where I'm coming from. Now, I will say, when I actually play battles while recording and talking about what's going on, I'm having more fun, but when I just play battles as a player, I, it's kind of... It was just having a hard time getting into it. It was just... A lot of mechanics that I didn't really fall in love with or care too much for. Um, oh, there was a duel, apparently. Oh, I wish I'd seen it. Duels are very different in records mode versus um, <laughs> romance mode, of course. Uh, and again, this wasn't really a general. So let's go ahead and occupy over here. No need to harm the populace too much. Support from the people is gained. And that'll increase the faction support for the next little while, which is nice and helpful. In establishing order, the grasp of the barbarians unravels and reveals to me this city and opportunity. From here, I could educate so many and lift the cloud of darkness from these times. Beautiful words, beautiful words. At home, Kong Rong seeks to help the people. So constructor upgrade a building in this town. All right, cool. Not a problem. Now, um, faction support is an interesting thing because that's something that increases over time. And when faction support is low, you can see the effects that come with it. Uh, so you do want to take care of that. And we also, what's going to happen is Beihai is going to be a food factory. Uh, no better way to put it, I think. Uh, so we're going, going to try and make as much food here as possible to supply the kingdom. Whereas uh, Taishan, I think we're going to target next because it has a trade port uh, and a town. So it'll be our commercial capital if we can... If we can take these two. That'll actually be great because in a, in, a, in, a, in a trade port, in a trade port, you build down this line and then you have some choices. But down this line, it increases commercial income, of course. Income from commerce. Uh, and then at the... Ooh, it also buffs our prestige. Interesting. Okay. Well, I'll want that. Makes sense. We're trade-oriented, so that'll help us uh, climb up the faction ladders. Uh, again, when you get more prestige, you climb up the the rank ladder. And uh, as a... I, I love how chill he looks. He's like, hey, what's up? Um, as, you, as you climb up, uh, what happens as someone who is loyal to the Han... Uh, you can't actually proclaim yourself emperor because that would be a disloyal move. So instead, you have to unite China by bringing all emperor seats under your control and by owning 95 counties. That's how it's done. Anyway, back on topic. Back on my off-topic topic that was on topic. Uh, the trade port will give us commercial income at the end over here. We can also look at industrial income or income from spice if we manage to get enough of that early on, early enough on, early, early on enough. Oh god, words. Uh, and then over here in the town, what we'd be able to do is um, use things like the inn, for example, to get that percentage buff to commerce income as well as commerce income as well. Uh, academies of culture will help us with uh, income from all sources. Okay, this is a bit of an option as well. Again, this is unique to us. And then the marketplace, of course, more commerce income and trade influence. So this might be the way we decide to go ultimately. So there is some decision making to do, which I appreciate because some of the recent Total War games have lacked that, um, which is, you know, not cool. Now, it's a little... Oh, man. Okay. I've got Hang Shao to the left of me and Empire to the right of me, and I'm stuck in the middle with you, and this is not feeling very good right now. I'm wondering if we take that trade port as soon as possible and maybe even try to sign a peace treaty with Hang Shao to prevent any trouble over there. Now, first of all, though, let's take a look at this mission, and let's go ahead and upgrade. Uh, this will give us... This will give us more food and income. This will give us much more income, but it reduces food. So we're going to stick with the irrigated farms, I think. Four turns it'll take to make. Um, the other option, of course, is that we have an empty slot that I can build anything in. And I could do... This will take one turn. It'll increase food production by 25% and income from peasantry. Which isn't much to begin with, if I'm honest. But... We can keep moving down this line pretty quickly. I don't think I mind that. 800 is the cost. Okay, here's what we'll do. We'll go ahead and set this up to be built. Uh, this is going to be, again, our food factory. Beihai is going to be where all the food is made. We'll get an assignment set up as well. Hopefully, we have supervised construction. This is actually exactly what I was looking for. Um, it's exactly what I was looking for because I can go ahead and get Sun Xiao doing that to reduce building upkeep, construction time, and construction costs. Uh, it'll take a turn for him to actually be assigned. And then we can, uh, you know, do some other upgrades or something. Cool. Um, we have an assignment set out. Yep. We've got mission issued. Two. Command resecured. Yep, 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 yep. Ooh, more friends. Ding Yang and Wang Xiu have become friends. Good. We're all friends together. And Wang Xiu has leveled up, it looks like. 
Again, I apologize if I'm butchering the names. Do correct me in the comments. I try to improve this kind of stuff whenever possible. So you can get more instinct. Helps with melee damage. You're the one who re leads the uh, the cavalry. Um, expertise, melee armor, piercing damage, and melee attack rate buffs. Nobility. Range block chance for melee cavalry. That's huge. Range fire on cavalry is deadly. And I'm notoriously bad at <laughs> being wary of that. So maybe we go with that. And authority will also give us more morale. I do like that extra charge speed though. And instinct will give us melee damage. Alright. Intensity it is for now. And then nobility afterwards. Apply that. And uh... Right, I guess we're stuck here for now. Let's see if Huang Xiao might be okay with peace. It's a little early, I think, but... No, the Yellow Turban Rebellion, of course, wants Hang Xiao, why not? Not willing to negotiate this deal at all at this point? Surely. We can tell- oh wow, no, they really don't want to. Balance of power shit. okay, hmm. I'm a little worried about them. I'm a little worried about the situation as, as a whole, but hey. We'll make do. As I said earlier, what, what could go wrong? And hopefully with this campaign, everything goes wrong. Hey, puns. Puns. I'm sorry. Ish. All right. I think Taishan's trade port is going to be our next target. What's this? Mission success. Our economy grows because we made that building. Good stuff. Battle must be joined and men must fight. Recruit and maintain 13. Okay. We've got plenty of money. Mm. Well, let's pull uh, Kongrong back to Beihai and... Uh, and then we'll recruit some over here. I do, I, I'm not too worried about aggression from here. I'm more worried about Fang Xiao, if I'm completely honest. Yeah, let's, let's hop on into here. And with the money we have, what do I want to recruit? I've got some cavalry, but the thing is, uh, let's see if we can look at, yeah, the garrison. Excuse me, um, so Yellow Turban Horsemen are actually quite good in melee. Uh, as you can see, their their melee toughness is 90, whereas our cavalry, 85. I, I don't know, it's hard to really gauge things over here. Um, I'll turn, so let's see, Wang Xu, you should have, yeah, so he's got Jian Sword Guard Cavalry, which is actually better, marginally, but better than, um, oh, nice, better than, uh, the, ooh enemy cavalry and we have the wedge formation oh no, no that's that's the you sorry I'm trying to figure it out here I'm trying to figure it out here i do want to get more cavalry in here and they're probably pretty expensive as well holy that's i could only recruit one so you know what i think that's out of the question do we get more g militia instead i could maybe get ah interesting so you've got all right, you've got uh, the Spear Guard. Melee toughness of 100. They look superior by a mile. By a mile. And they've got Missile Defense. Go ahead and recruit a couple of you, I think. Okay, and then the thing is that uh, Kong Rong can actually get the Fury of Beihai. Ooh. Yeah, right. Oh my god, yeah, no, that's way too expensive, I can't afford that. We could get more ranged units, though, again. We've got the huge buff to ammunition. Range can cause so much trouble for the enemy. We could also get range in the form of a trebuchet, but I don't think that's a good idea just quite yet. Maybe a little premature for that. Maybe a touch premature. We can get more cavalry, get some more rear charging and stuff going on, keep us more mobile. We can recruit one unit, at least. Really kind of punching a hole in our economy here. But I think it'll be worth it. Because, again, once we get the trade port, our economy will start to flow once more. And uh, we, we can also take a look at trade deals soon, I hope. Only really willing to trade, eh? Mo okay, both factions don't have a free trade route available. Okay, fair enough. I start with one, but 
nobody else nearby me does. Slash nobody likes me. All right, I think we're in a good enough spot. That's the turn. We'll hit Taishan next uh, next turn, I think. And uh, actually, I have a different plan. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. Let's get the turns rolling, shall we? Get the turns rolling. And again, the, the turn like rotation is actually so fast, I don't feel like I need to edit them out. But let me know in the comments if you'd rather I do. Uh, your feedback does make a huge difference to how I approach things. Yen Shu has declared war on the Yellow Turban Rebellion. Uh, we've completed this mission. Replenishment buff. Oh, that's really good, actually. Now's the time I need it. And Kong Rong becomes a warlord, growing in power. Uh, okay, I need to hold three settlements. Currently, I have two, and I will gain momentum, have more trade influence. Cool. Very cool. Now, do I give it a turn and sit here? See, what I wanted to do, actually, was I was thinking I would... Uh, we got that 10%. The mustering rate is helping, so I'd rather stay here right now. Um, I was tempted to move towards uh, Taishan's town to see what's going on here, um, rather than just take this, because it only has the garrison, which is pitiful. Um, but right now, I'm going to stay put, let things recruit, and maybe we actually get some more units in here. I uh, can't really recruit much. And I don't want to reduce my income by too much either. This should be an acceptable army for now. For now, this will have to do. Let's go ahead and end turn, stay put, look pretty, and hope that... Oh, a non-aggression pact with Liu Bei, and he wants to give me money. So I could just accept it. I like this. But let's go ahead and see if we can't uh, massage this deal a bit more. I mean, like, it could be as little as... No, damn. Okay, he, he, he went the edge of what he wanted to give me here. So fine, let's get that non-aggression pact going. Um, I'm going to cancel this. I like to role play, so I'm going to pretend like I didn't negotiate it. Uh, because I didn't really. I was looking at it from a gameplay perspective. But yes, I'll accept your 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 offer, your proposal. Those of you that don't know, uh, I like to roleplay my campaigns as much as possible. I like to actually pretend like I'm maybe the characters or the nations involved or whatever it might be. I think it's more fun that way. Um, so that's kind of the, the, the approach I take rather than min-maxing. Though I will be doing a little bit of math at least as we try to balance our, uh, our factions, you know, uh, economy and stuff. Uh, we have the assignment is active over here, and that assignment is again reducing construction costs and construction times. Let's go ahead and see what we can do here. Another food production buff, or do this. Plus two, that'll stack with a plus 25%. I and mean, that doesn't make much of a difference. Let's go ahead and get the farm laborer camp, I think. This we can't afford, unfortunately. Won't be able to for a couple turns. So let's go ahead and up this. Upgrade this, rather. And one more turn we stay put before we roll out. Reform is available. Let's go ahead and buff our... Well, there's a couple things I can do, actually. Uh, I could take a look at buffing our population growth, or even taking a look at more trade agreements, but if... I, I already start with one, because I have foreign envoys to kick things off. But if people near me don't have it, then what's the point? Recruitment cost reduction is maybe not a bad idea. Income from commerce will come in handy as of as early as next turn. Income from peasantry is what I need now. Let's go with that. Register of land and population. Issue that reform. Five turns until the next one. All right, that is the turn. Staying put for so long makes me nervous. But patience is a virtue, as they say. It's not a full stack, but it's an expensive stack. Might as well have it filled up, topped up. All right, now I almost certainly want to see either Huang Xiao, do you want... No, never. Ooh, but that's not as... It was negative 30 or plus earlier, wasn't it? Okay, well, let's go ahead and move far enough ahead so we can see what's going on. And what I actually think I want to do is uh, switch to ambush stance. That takes 25%, yes. So we're going to move up to like here-ish, 70%. Like if I go beyond, it'll be 45% success chance, which I don't want. Let's try, let's poke and prod the bear here a little bit. 70%? Good enough. Are we able to see from here? Hmm. An interesting decision. Okay, I'm very tempted to roll in. But I want the trade port first. Let's, okay, we're going to stay put here. Ambush stance. Give it a minute. I know I'm playing maybe a bit more cautiously than I should be playing, but I'm just nervous. My experiences with all the camp...
there you have it. My experiences with all of the campaigns that I've played so far is this kind of nonsense where the AI is very aggressive. Okay. Got the Han Empire marching through my lands. Looks like they're just going past us, though. Hopefully they are. If they take the livestock farm, I will take them out. Uh, normal stance. Can we make it to the trade port? We can. So we could actually... That's a big army. And then there's the garrison. That's a full stack altogether. Now, thankfully, some of these units are hurt. Don't know if I can take that army on with what I have. I'm worried he's going to come for uh, for me next. I could move towards the town there, but I'm worried about this. I think I'll need to move up here. The thing is that a trade port is actually walled. It will have defenses, like towers and stuff. Here's what we're going to do. If I can. Oh, I can. Do I get a trebuchet this early? Very expensive. Upkeep is super high as well. Nah, that's pointless. Let's let's go ahead and get the uh, crossbowmen instead, perhaps. So we can get a couple of those, and we can afford it as well. But I can do that. But we'll still move in for the attack here, even though it's a reduced unit. Or I could do... I can't. I'd have to cancel both of them to get one more cavalry unit. And you have any cavalry? You do not have any cavalry. Alright, so that leaves that open for me. There's some cavalry over here. Still yellow turban horsemen. Right, of course. Wait, why are your stats? Oh, because the, uh, the unit's reduced. Sorry, guys. Uh, still mulling over stuff out loud. I uh, think I'm good to move in. Let's go ahead and recruit a couple of these crossbows, I think. Range power is less, but melee toughness and range toughness is higher. Oh, I don't want that. I want... I want this. Go with that. Got the ammo for it. Still have some money left over. Our economy will recover soon enough. Because they've got a lot of range as well, so I need those shields. Alright, well that's all set in stone, I guess. We're going to move in towards the trade port, and hopefully they don't have a second army coming in towards uh, Beihai. Go ahead and take this trade port. Now I could... Eric Victory. Uh, I could demand their surrender. I doubt they'll do it. Nope. Um, supplies are already depleted, so I could just try to starve them out a little bit more. They'll probably sally forth, but I can at least try to starve them out um, and then take the town. Really worried about Wang Yun here. Can we have peace? I imagine not. Oh, your Dongzhou's vassal. Never, he says. Okay, this is going to be interesting. Foolish tyrant. Hopefully nothing too bad happens. And Shi Yi is what? Low satisfaction. Is there anything I can do about that? Unfortunately not right now, buddy. Uh, so don't get too upset about that. That's the turn, though. Let's see what the AI does. If they, in fact, sally forth, I imagine they will. It's kind of like the only option they really have. Uh, they, Yeah, and Empire's moving on. That's what I thought. Looked like it. They did not sally forth. They instead stayed still. Attacker reinforcements. The siege progresses, but our assaulting forces grow weary and supplies run low. A nearby village, loyal and abundant in resources, could possibly aid us. Shall we call on them to help? I think this kind of stuff is really neat as well. So I could call reinforcements. So it reduces population at Taishan a little bit, but it increases war fervor. Helps our military supplies. I wish I could actually check, though. Or I could not call do nothing. Like, why can't I? I want to click on my army and see the supply situation. A little bit of reduction in population won't be the end of the world, even though it does help us overall. I'll call in reinforcements. Excellent. Our supplies were fine, but... I'll take it. What's the deal here? You guys still willing to fight, apparently? Start with them out for one more turn. Very close to giving up. If I don't have to lose men, then I'd rather not. Though I do have to be wary about what might be coming from there. Uh, is... Liu Bei. Able to trade yet? Still no. Come on, man. Wait, what? For this to be a viable term? Yeah, must have a free trade. Hoping he'd get there already. And the nobody wants peace. These guys are a vassal. Alright, cool. Still still surrounded by war on all sides. And what's this? Sun Xiao has a... Ooh. 
Hunshao, Sentinel. Spells at locking down enemy generals, blah, blah, blah. Guard. You buff your expertise and make you an administrator down the line because your expertise is already so high and that helps reduce construction costs. So, let's see. Uh, income from industry buff, expertise buff, character experience, range firing rate when commanding buffed. Interesting. Um, this is a cunning buff over here. Helps with income from commerce, silk, and spice, though. So I could make him the administrator of Taishan. So he'll have his expertise help reduce construction costs and he'll have his... Uh, income buff as well. Even though he's a guard, that feels like the right way to use him. So I need to remember, Sun Xiao, who's currently supervising construction, will later be promoted, I would say, to uh, taking care of, uh, of an entire commandery. Sun Qian is... Gotta be a different Sun Qian. All right. Turn. Let's see if they sally forth. Or if another army. That's a missed opportunity. But hey, I get the trade port. Very easily. We're going to go ahead and roll them. Decisive victory. Don't even need to fight this anymore. I was kind of hoping to have a battle here, but hey, I guess not. Let's go ahead and delegate that. Um, shouldn't be too difficult. And let's actually see where that army went off to. A little bit of money gained, and we're going to simply occupy. Helps with the faction support and all. You gain momentum as well. Trade influence buffed up. Cool. Uh, from each according to their ability. Send any character on an assignment. Oh, I've already done that, so that should trigger basically right away. All right, so that's cool. You're taking the river back, I imagine, towards your town, but I might be able to cut you off, actually. Now, you could come back towards the trade port. I can get... All the way down to here, though. Fastest route is actually cutting through there. All right, so maybe we go ahead. Yeah, I think we'll go ahead and move over to here. Oh, no, right, we're stuck here for now. My bad, my bad, my bad. Got distracted by seeing that army flee. Well, I guess we might as well stay inside in case he decides to come back. And let's go ahead and level you up, Kong Rong. Uh, up your cunning, maybe? We don't really care for anything that happens when he's an administrator, because we're not going to be doing that. Uh, we care for his cunning, primarily. We'll go with resourcefulness. Enables flaming shot and adds cunning and adds military supplies in enemy territory. Definitely the way to go. 55% ammunition. Dope. Alright. <laughs> I didn't think they were going to get away, but hey, they're not replenishing until they get back home, so this is working out well enough for me. My economy, though, Whew. not so hot right now. Not so hot right now. Right, Hang Xiao, looks like you're almost definitely trying to make it back. I don't know if you did. Feeling good about this situation right now. I think the patience played off. Zhang Yan declared war on Yellow Turban Rebellion. The Kong seek trade and prosperity. I have a trade. Okay, does that mean someone near me can actually trade? Otherwise, why would you assign me this? Wait, of at least a thousand per turn. Geez, that'll take some time. Ooh, seize the future. A scholar joins your faction and asks for an audience with you. Begging no disrespect, he tactfully explains that though his previous lord was lacking in leadership qualities, he was in possession of advancements that have thus far evaded your faction. He suggests that there are many useful reforms available to those brave enough to embrace them and states that he recognizes this courage in you. You thank him for his counsel and now consider which ideas to take forward as your own. Oh, cool. Buffs... Down. Okay, all right, all right, all right. I can get behind that. Don't we already have? No, we have you here. Wouldn't mind swapping in a scholar above our cunning, but our cunning's already high. We're fine. Kind of love how happy he looks. Okay, um, replenishment won't be going too quickly over here. We're going to make our way towards the town. We want to put it under siege while they're still hurting. Uh, ancillary's gained. I'm guessing that's the scholar. All right, cool. Go ahead and rush on down this way. Yeah, let's do it. Stay within our territory anyway. We'll see what uh, what he's doing. We'll see what he's doing. Now, check about... Nope, still no trade opportunities. 
I like the quick deal option because you can very quickly tell what can and cannot be done. Let's take a look at this option over here as well. Maybe time to get the currency-based economy. Uh, we could get this income from all sources buffed. Actually, is not a bad idea compared to just from commerce. So let's go ahead with the civil service recommendations. Uh, that'll buff our peasantry income as well as at Taishan. We should be able to eventually upgrade this. We do have an assignment available. I don't know why this game is giving me... Oh, I need the capital right here. Even worse for it to give me the notification. Otherwise, I would have ignored it. Um, right. Well, we'll have Taishan soon enough. That is the turn. All right. What the AI does, I imagine. Oh. They must... They have more further back that they're probably falling back to. This town will be mine. Oh, it's ripe for the taking right now. I could roll it right now. This is me weighing my patient option versus my aggressive option. We all know how I feel about patience. So, and no reinforcements in the area. Decisive victory predicts the game. I, I feel bad not fighting battles, but you know what? Let's fight another one because it's the first episode. Let's get a little bit of everything, get some cinematic shots and stuff happening as well. Should be a fun but quick battle, so why not, right? Let me know in the comments what you think about these kinds of battles and if you would like to see more or less. But let's, uh, let's dive on in. All right. Ooh, it's a nice rainy day. Very pretty, very pretty. Uh, so again, some of our units are not fully uh, replenished or anything. It's quite a nice city as well. Shame that it's raining. Would have liked to have seen it when it's uh, you know all bright and vibrant, but it does look quite beautiful and it looks like uh, the lanterns are on as well. I'm not going to spend too much time glancing around. Oof, the, the reflection at the water. Mm. Man, this game is... There's some things, honestly, like... Goddamn. And then there are other things that are goddamn in the other direction. All right, our cavalry is looking hot and heavy. Well, no, because it's light cavalry, but you know what I mean. We've got some entry points over here that we could use, and what I like most, actually, I just noticed as I was zooming away, is we've got trees. We're gonna hide in the trees, and we're gonna use that opportunity to push in and maybe capture these towers right away. They can only fire forward, but I think I noticed there were some towers, yes, back here, and these ones we'll be able to fire in 360 degrees, so we have to make sure that the enemy isn't able to hide back here because this will be a tough uh, tough bridge uh, to take. But yes, we'll hide our cavalry over there, and then as soon as possible, they'll rush out and take this. And that way, the AI won't actually position itself over there, and instead, we'll try and defend these entry points, which is where I'm going to put the uh, bulk of my forces, I think. These little bridges will be tough as well, little mini bridge battles through the course of the uh, grander battle. Go ahead and put two of you over here to move up that way, I think. That should be enough to overwhelm that. Let's go ahead and get our archers back over here. Get you set up properly like so. Again, we'll nudge them forward, fire away at whatever might be defending the uh, the area there, and then push through with our forces uh, while over here. This is way too many units for one entry point. Let's get you two. Let's get you two over here. Right, we'll move them in that way. And then we'll get you three over here. And again, the fact that they're hidden should mean that maybe the AI won't deploy anything over here. Uh, let's get you here, and we'll get you here. Ooh, I'm feeling pretty good about this. I'm feeling pretty good about this. And what I could actually do is get everybody in loose formation. Because, again, towers. Reduces our charge resistance, but the AI is not going to be charging much. Oh my god, messed up my formations. There we go. <laughs> good enough, good enough. Cavalry is still hidden. These guys are still hidden. They're a little clumped up, but it's fine. Okay, nice big loose formations. Let's, uh... Let's do this. Be fun. Oh, I feel sad for the enemy. Alright, dude, we're just gonna... March up. March, march, march. Don't rush, don't rush. March you up as well. There we go. Loose formation should be quite helpful. Concentrated their troops over here. Again, we will simply march up. And our cavalry actually has an opening already. Let's go. 
Looks so dope. Oh, yeah, here we go. Oh my god, one's already dropped. Wait, did I speed time up by mistake? Yes, I did. Alright, in we go. Lots of these. Oh my god. Again, one of my favorite animations is actually seeing cavalry drop to range fire, but you can see how much damage we're taking over here. Oof. Oof. Taking a lot of damage here, despite the loose formation. So many dead already. But we're gonna punch through, no problem. What's happening back over here? They've fallen back. Let's rush. Over here, we're firing away. Go up. There we go, good stuff. Rush up. Try and capture these towers. What are you, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? No, go that way. We're still firing away. Stay on top of them, please. We're doing over here. And you three. Time to rush, please. And capture those towers as well. Rush through, and our cavalry is okay. We're gonna pull you back over here. Let's pull you over here. We've got some barricades, unfortunately, so we have to go around that way. Good barricade placement. They knew something was up. All right, we've come through here. Carrying these guys off. We're gonna push through. Get rid of the loose formation. We're capturing the tower. Get rid of the loose formation as well. Go. Archers, you're fine back there. Still firing away up there. We can maybe turn around and fire over here instead. Right, cavalry still making its way around. God, it looks beautiful in this rainy, rainy temperature. Line you up over there. Archers fire here. They're right there. Might as well. Oof, there we go. Good volley, hopefully. All right, not the best. Got a few killed. Oh, yeah, you know what? This is beautiful. Ho, 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 ho. Love watching those numbers drop. That's some good hits. That's some good hits. What's happening over here, though? This was not really as ideal for us. Uh, we can push through. We're still in loose formation. Cavalry is rounding the bend there. We can actually send you guys no longer in loose formation. Charging down over this way. Archers fire here. Move up. Cavalry coming through. In we go. Good stuff. It hits over here as well. Yeah, those guys are going to give up. Let's go ahead and push you through. Turn off loose formation. You can actually fit in here. You up in here as well. Anybody taking hurt? Well, I mean. Go back this way. Push you guys through. Turn off loose formation. We don't need to capture these towers anymore. Alright, cavalry has done its job. We can move a unit down this way. Archers, can we turn you around and fire over here? Nah, too far away. We can actually get into the turtle formation. Should have done that. Range block chance is so much higher. God damn. Party. Could sneak by them over there, I think. Let's form up first. Go and get a rear charge over there. And again, we are coming across the bridge here as well, so we will be getting some rear charges either way. The enemy never stood a chance. They never stood a chance. Firing way up over here. You can fire, hold your fire, actually. Then you charging up there. Crush them. Then you over here. And, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and charge. A nice rear charge over here, hopefully. Just mere peasants that must be crushed. In we come. Yeah, they're gonna give up right away, aren't they? There we go. Mere cowards. Cowards, a lot of you. Whoa, my spear guards. They're also cowards. What the hell? <laughs> Guys. A nice charge in here, maybe. Oof. I think I do think that Three Kingdoms has some of the best charges in a historical game ever. Like, it's not too over the top. It feels weighty. And uh, there's, like, trampling and stuff going on as well. It's not just kind of weird tossing. Big fan, big fan, big fan. Big fan. Claim victory, a decisive one it is, and that battle probably lost more than the AI would have if I had auto-resolved, if I'm completely honest, but that was a fun enough five-minute battle. I think it was worth fighting. Got to see what settlements are like as well, and how deadly towers can be, because our cavalry took a beating on the charge there. Took a beating on the charge. But Huangqiao has lost Haishan's large town. All right, let's go ahead and occupy that. Commandery and Conquer. One of my favorite mission titles. <laughs>
By holding control of the entire commandery, we can better ensure that we are creating institutions that educate all the people, not just a few. Wisdom shared is twice as valuable. Again, yeah, very nice writing. All right, let us stay put and replenish for a bit. Ah, Huang Xiao fell back to Dong, the small city here. Getting a little worried about how spread out I, I am. What's affecting our public order here? Faction support is a problem. Slowly increasing. Slowly increasing. I could maybe get... Well, this will give us 75% income from commerce. This will give us that and population growth. Oh, they can both do it. Chi Yi is kind of upset. Lack of purpose is making him sad. I could assign him there. Sun Xiao just finished his assignment, I guess, at Beihai. Could assign him back there again. Here, we're going to have some upgrading and stuff to do. So, you know what? Actually, let's go ahead and maybe get Sun Xiao over here. I don't want to do supervised construction. I think I'd rather up my income. That's not that much. All right, fine. Go ahead, Sun Xiao. Supervise construction here, please. It'll take us a turn to get there. I can be that patient. We can only have one assignment, unfortunately, so we can't do anything back here. I could up this, get a little bit more income. Or I could up this. I think I should wait, though. 2650 without the uh, construction cost reduction. Would have been helpful here. And we do have a level up on Wang Shu. Let's see, what can we do for you, buddy? Authority buff, maybe? Oh, we were thinking nobility next. Or mobility next. Battle running speed buff. You know, for cavalry, not a bad idea, but no. No, no, no. Nobility. We need, um... We need that range block chance buff. You saw what was happening to our melee cavalry on the charge there. Go ahead and apply that. That's good. Authority's up as well. As a result of that, morale buff. Good. Like it. Love it. Twist it. Bop it. Hopefully Han isn't planning anything. Can't afford the upgrades here. I'm wondering if I should save up instead. Let's go ahead and demolish this, because we have to. I'm not going to spend the money on it. But, then by, but that means by next turn, we'll at least have... Uh, the assignment going while we're trying to construct. Uh, assignments made, commandery secured, character rank, character development, right? Nothing here I didn't already know, and that is, I think, ladies and gentlemen, the turn. Oh. Military access Liu Bei wishes to have, um, and I think we can allow that. I gotta negotiate it. Dong Zhuo is not gonna like that. Oh, I guess he's running away from Dong Zhuo, maybe? My gratitude is great. My gratitude is gratitude. Ooh. My god, how many subs have I lost today? There's Hong Xiao again. Where are you go where are you headed? You trying to get the trade port, buddy? You're trying to get the trade port. He might get to the trade port before I can get to the trade port. <laughs> I mean I can force march Ooh. Fire burns brightly and indiscriminately. But no flame can last forever. Starved of air, it chokes, it splutters. And is then extinguished. The tyrant is dead. Yet in the ashen darkness, the avaricious prowl. All right, the tyrant is dead. Um, I was hoping that would be the next thing that popped up when I close that, but instead, mission issued. Kong Rong seeks to make himself known. I just need to become second marquee to gain more momentum. I will work towards that. So long as the tyrant lives, um, about that, the tyrant no longer lives. The minister Wang Yun is plotting the overthrow of Dong Zhuo. No longer willing to suffer the tyrant, it is said that Dong Zhuo's adopted son has been manipulated into striking the killing blow. Dong Zhuo is dead. He's dead dead. B.E.D. dead. Dong Min is in charge instead. Happens pretty early on in the campaign, actually. Uh, and I need to send, I think, uh, Kong Rong's army back to Taishan again. We can uh, force march, get back in there, and keep this unreplenished army at bay. Um, that should be helpful for us. We have a fair bit of money as well. It is a harvest season, too. We can use that money to upgrade stuff over here. Or, again, like I'm actually planning on doing, upgrade stuff over here. That extra income from commerce will be helpful. We match that with some things that buff income on a percentage basis. Um, where am I? Like the marketplace, perhaps? Or we need to be a small city for that, eh? In in the marketplace is what I was thinking, but that's fine. We can go ahead and upgrade the small city. We have some money. 
And hopefully we can get some, like, uh, trade deals and stuff going. And this will help give us walls as well. Like, proper walls so we can actually defend ourselves. Cool. Well, folks, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you had some fun here today. This is where we're going to call it a session. I like to keep these an hour long, and I think it was a pretty... Pretty powerful session. We got a lot done. Still playing wide for now, but again, you have to, to establish a power base. You have to defend what is rightfully yours, and then you start building tall. So getting really excited for some of the crazy diplomatic options we'll have, especially when we reach second marquee. And uh, I believe it's second marquee. No, I think it's marquee. When we can start talking about vassalization. Let's take a quick check over here. Uh, create vassal. Do, do, do. I'm just remembering my uh, yeah, like we are. my Yen Xiao campaign. Yeah, okay. I need to be marquee before I can do that. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Just wanted to double check. Anyways, folks, this is where we're going to call it. I hope you had a good time. If you did, you know what to do. Drop a like, drop a comment. Let me know you would like to see more Three Kingdoms on this channel. If you have any feedback, drop that down below as well. A massive thanks goes out to all of my channel members and patrons for supporting this channel on a monthly basis. We go on full time now, baby, so it makes a really big difference in keeping us alive and running smoothly. Uh, and a big thanks, of course, goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers.